Hey everyone, guess whose birthday just passed? I've been trying to figure out what kind of video, if I even ended up wanting to make one, for my birthday, and I finally decided that I would make a cake. But not just any kind of cake, a mirror cake. But not just any kind of mirror cake, an entremet. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially a really fancy schmancy mousse cake that has really pretty layers inside. They look really pretty when you cut into them, and I've been wanting to make one for a while. I've been wanting to make just a straight up mirror cake for a while, but I just never had the time, and I was honestly pretty intimidated because they look like they're pretty hard. But I figured for my birthday, I'll set aside some time and I'll make one. Or two, or three. The one that I'm making today is inspired by my favorite dessert, tiramisu, but obviously with some changes to make it more of like an entremet instead of a straight up tiramisu. So this is probably going to be a mix of a tutorial slash watch me stumble through trying to make this fancy thing, but it should be fun. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. So let's get started. Some tools that you'll need for various parts of the cake are a 6 inch springform pan, a 5 inch round cutter, 6 inch cake boards, a stand mixer is recommended, but you could use a hand mixer or even just a whisk if you think that you have the arm strength, acetate sheets, I actually just used some clear binder inserts for this, tape, an offset spatula, a piping bag, and a candy thermometer. First I made some coffee jelly. To make some, you'll need one 0.25 ounce package of unflavored gelatin, one tablespoon of hot water, one tablespoon and one and a half teaspoons of white sugar, and one cup of fresh brewed coffee. Mix the gelatin and the hot water together until melted. Whisk in the sugar and then the coffee. Pour the mixture through a strainer into an 8x8 inch pan lined with saran wrap. I doubled the recipe because I needed extra, so I used a 9x13 inch pan. I also skipped the saran wrap step and completely regretted it later. Skim as many of the bubbles off as you can. Afterwards, I realized that you could probably just whisk the hot coffee and sugar into the gelatin all in one step, but that's not what I did, so... Oh well. Stick it in the fridge overnight to set up. Next is some coffee simple syrup. You'll need 1 4 cups of water, 1 4 cup sugar, 3 4 of a teaspoon of instant coffee, and 1 8 teaspoon of vanilla extract. In a small saucepan, heat the sugar and water on a medium low heat, stirring occasionally just until the sugar is melted. Remove from the heat and mix in the instant coffee and vanilla extract. Let cool. Now, the cake. You'll need one 6 inch cake pan, greased, a 5 inch round cutter, 4 tablespoons of white sugar, 1 egg, 4 tablespoons of unsalted butter, softened, 1 half cup of flour, 1 half teaspoon of baking powder, a pinch of salt, 3 tablespoons of milk, and 1 teaspoon of vanilla. Whisk the sugar and egg together until pale, like so. Throw in the butter and whisk until combined. Whisk in the flour, baking powder, and salt. Then mix in the milk and vanilla. Pour into a prepared baking pan. Throw it in the oven and bake for 30 to 35 minutes or until a golden brown and a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. Remove from the pan, level, and then use your ring mold to cut the cake down. Put the cake on one of your 6 inch cake boards and wrap your cake with some acetate that's been cut to 1 half inch tall and tape it together. If you want, you can use the ring mold that you used to cut the cake to help position the acetate nice and tight. Brush the cake with the coffee simple syrup. 
I actually forgot to do this until after I put the chocolate mousse on, so I had to wait until after the mousse was set so that I could flip the cake over and brush the syrup over the bottom of the cake. But anyway, now it's time to make the mocha hazelnut mousse. For this you'll need a heaping cup of mini marshmallows, two tablespoons of butter softened, five ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chopped up, half a tablespoon of instant espresso powder, two tablespoons of hot water, half a cup of heavy cream, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one fourth cup of chopped hazelnuts. Put the marshmallows, butter, chocolate, coffee powder, and water in a saucepan. On medium-low heat, melt everything together while stirring on and off. Set it aside to cool a little bit. Meanwhile, whip the cream with the vanilla extract until thick. and then fold it into the cooled chocolate mixture. Pour the mousse onto the cake and use your offset spatula to spread it evenly up to the edge of the acetate. Cover it with saran wrap and put it in the fridge for about an hour to set up. If you have any extra mousse, you can just pour that into some individual serving cups, let them set, and then enjoy them just like that. After the mousse is set, remove the saran wrap and the acetate collar. Prepare another acetate collar to be long enough to fit around the 6 inch cake board and to be 2 inches tall. Wrap and tape the acetate around the cake board using the ring portion of your springform pan to help keep it in place, just like you did with the ring mold before. I found it easier to do the next step with the springform ring still on, so I suggest doing that as well. And now for the white chocolate cream cheese mousse. You'll need 4 grams of gelatin, 1 tablespoon plus 1 teaspoon of cold water, a heaping 1 half cup of white chocolate, 4 ounces of cream cheese softened, 1 and 1 half tablespoons of sour cream, 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract, and 3 fourths of a cup of heavy cream. Mix the gelatin with the cold water and let it bloom for 10 minutes. Heat up your white chocolate on a double boiler or in the microwave. I actually accidentally seized my white chocolate because I heated it up too quickly in the microwave, but it ended up working out alright once I mixed it with the gelatin and everything else. Anyway, once that's melted, mix in the bloomed gelatin and then set it aside. Cream together the softened cream cheese and sour cream, mix in your tablespoon of vanilla extract, and then mix in the white chocolate gelatin mixture. Whip the cream into a medium peak. I went too far with mine and I ended up having stiff peaks, so the mousse had a lot of air bubbles when I assembled the cake, which you want to try to avoid. Fold in your whipped cream into the white chocolate cream cheese mixture. Fill up a piping bag with the mousse and pipe it around the edge of the cake and the chocolate mousse layers, making sure to squeeze enough out to avoid gaps of air. Spread a bit more mousse over the top of the chocolate mousse layer to completely cover it. Now you can take the springform ring off and the acetate will stay put. And you can now see if you have any gaps. If so, just use your offset spatula to squish the mousse down in those areas. Use your 5 inch ring mold to cut your coffee jelly to size. Carefully remove the disc and place it in the middle of the cake. As you can see, I had quite a bit of trouble here. As mentioned before, I didn't line my pan, so the jelly didn't want to come up as one big piece very easily, so I ended up just piecing the broken pieces together on top of the cake. It all worked out in the end, generally. Spread more of the mousse on top, using your spatula to level off the top just like you did with the chocolate mousse. Stick it in the fridge to set overnight. While I prepped the mirror glaze, I threw the cake into the freezer to try to get the outer part of the cake as cold as possible. This helps the glaze set faster on the cake. Anyway, on to the mirror glaze. You'll need 1 4 cup and 3 tablespoons of water, 4 teaspoons of powdered gelatin, 1 cup of granulated sugar, 3 fourths of a cup of corn syrup, another 1 4 cup of water, half cup of sweetened condensed milk, and 8 ounces of white chocolate. Bloom the gelatin in the 1 4 and 3 tablespoons of cold water. Combine the corn syrup, the other 1 4 cup of water, and sugar in a pot and bring it to a boil. Add the bloomed gelatin and the condensed milk and whisk smooth. 
Pour the entire hot mixture over the chocolate and whisk smooth. This may take a while, so just be patient. An alternative for those of you who aren't patient or who don't have jerk cats who knock over your kitchen gadgets to unreachable corners of the kitchen that you have to basically unhook your stove and move it in order to gain access to those areas, you can just use a stick blender to blitz this mixture into smoothness. At this point, I added a tiny bit of white food coloring to make the mixture less yellow and more opaque. Pour through a strainer into as many containers as you want colors. For me, that's three. And then use food dye to color them however you'd like. I went for white, a pale green, and a deeper green. Prep your other decorations. I tossed some chopped hazelnuts with edible gold powder, chopped up a few pistachios, and mixed some of the gold powder with a tiny bit of vodka. If you don't have access to clear alcohol, you can get away with using extract, like lemon or something clear or light colored like that. Just be careful not to overuse it if you use something flavored. One time I used that trick to paint gold stuff onto a cake and that portion tasted so super strongly of that flavor. Set up a pouring station with a sheet pan lined with parchment paper and a small overturned bowl or cup to set the cake on. Use your candy thermometer, or meat thermometer if you seem to have misplaced your candy thermometer, to check your glaze mixtures. They should be ready to use at about 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. If they cool off too much, you can easily just heat them up in the microwave in short bursts to get them back up to temperature. Once ready, take your cake out of the freezer and place it onto your pouring station. Remove your saran wrap and acetate collar. Here you can really see how bumpy my mousse is from over whipping the cream. That's what I think the problem was anyway. The first style of glaze that I'm going to show you is simply one color with some gold detail. Slowly pour the glaze around the edges, making sure they get completely covered, and then pour some over the top. So I attempted to glaze this cake when the glaze was about 90 degrees, but it didn't go too well. The glaze came off way too quickly, leaving a really thin layer of glaze. And I think this is because I live in a place that's really hot and humid. The other cakes, which I'll show in a bit, were glazed with glaze that was more towards the 80 degree mark, and they worked much better. Before the glaze sets up, cover the back of an offset spatula with the gold vodka mixture, and then gently drag it across the top of the cake. I actually watered down my gold mixture a little too much, so, the gold swipe isn't super prominent, so if you want it to be, try to make the mixture more of the consistency of, like, paint or something. Anyway, let that set up a little bit more, and then you can decorate it with more things. I threw on some nuts, and I actually didn't wait long enough for the glaze to set up enough, so it was still slowly moving off the cake, taking the nuts with it. Thankfully, none of the decorative nuts fell off, but they got awfully close. Anyway, once the drips slow down, use your spatula to knock them off of the bottom edge. Then use your spatula to pick up your cake and place it on a plate or something so that you can throw it back into your fridge to set up for the last time for about an hour. To do a bold marbled effect, pour the main color over your cake just like before. Take one of your secondary colors and pour a small amount in random spots on the cake. Repeat with your remaining colors. Use your spatula to gently smooth over the glaze. This slightly mixes the colors together and gives it a marbled look. Like before, let it set, remove the drips, and decorate if you wish. Lastly, this is another sort of marbled effect. Pour your secondary colors into the main glaze container. Gently mix the colors together very slightly. I also almost forgot to add my gold, so I had to add it after I did the gentle mixing, and then I had to mix it a little bit more, which I think led to less of a marbled effect. Pour it onto your cake just like before. Let it set up, remove the drips and add your decorations, and then it's done. Any extra glaze can be stored in an airtight container for up to 10 days. And don't forget the drippings from the cake. That glaze is still good too. Just add it to the same container. I was really unhappy with how the first cake turned out, so as I was mixing all the glaze colors together so that I could store them all as one, I decided to recover it. I carefully removed the nuts, and then I poured the glaze over just like before, and it worked much better this time. Let the cake chill in the fridge to set up. Once the cake has chilled and set in the fridge for about an hour, it's ready to eat. I'm so happy with how these cakes turned out, and I learned that while mirror glazing stuff is a huge sticky mess, 
it's not nearly as difficult as I thought it was. But wait, we have to cut into the cake to see how the layers turned out. Make sure you use a hot knife when you cut into this. Initially I didn't, so the first slice ended up not as photogenic as I would have liked, but I went back in later with a knife that I had run hot water over and wiped dry, and it cut so much better. You can see more clearly how great the layers look on this thing. And of course, right here, you can see the evidence of the broken coffee jelly. Oh well. I was a bit nervous to taste this after all of the work that I had put into it. Normally I save the scraps of cakes that I make so I can take all of the components and taste them together to see if they work, but for some reason I didn't do that with this cake. But I'm happy to say that it turned out great. Well, I liked it anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. I post art videos every Tuesday and DIY videos every Thursday. Thank you to my patrons who helped me produce this video. If you are interested in becoming a patron or you just want to know what the heck Patreon is, I'll leave a link right here and you can read up all about it or become a patron or something. I post behind the scenes photos and also um, behind the scenes kind of like progress photos of my projects. So yeah. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, and Snapchat and I'll leave the information to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below. And if you make any of my projects, please share them using the hashtag right here on Instagram or Twitter or whatever you can use hashtags on. I love seeing how you guys interpret my projects and seeing what you guys make. So please share them. All right, I'll see you next week.